How's it going guys? Your boy Salem here. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. In today's video, I'm gonna go through a bunch of tips and tricks on how to be an efficient bruiser in walls and LPRs. This might apply for VGIG players too, but keep in mind this is solely based on my experience in wars and mine alone. It doesn't mean that this is the only correct way on how to be a good bruiser, but more like what I found to be efficient in wars and LPRs that I like to share with you guys. Some of these tips are going to be knowledge by default that most competitive players would agree on, but some are just how I play as a bruiser personally. And make sure to stick around to the end of the video for the gear breakdown, what I think would be best for bruiser, hot rune choices, and master retreat. So without any further ado, here are some of my tips on how to be an efficient bruiser. Tip number one, follow up on your teammates. In order to win a clone fight, you have to work with your teammates. That means follow up on each other's abilities, not just making your own play. So if your other bruiser has already formed a clump, instead of throwing another grab on it, you could shockwave first, then regrabbing into Maelstrom. It would be more deadly if it's done correctly, because then your other bruiser can keep his Molo stacks and when he Maelstrom instead of losing them, swapping to his hammer and lose all the Molo stacks. So in this particular example, my shockwave is coming up in one second and I already used my graph so I would come with my other bruiser, see if he got an auto grab or not. And if he does, then I'll save my shockwave for that engagement instead of trying to get my uh, cooldowns back. So as soon as I saw River throw a grab right here on the clump of three people, I immediately pop my consumable, my ultimate, and jump on it with a shockwave. And you can see that it's just so powerful to kind of push them all the way back and they have to wait for another push to come in. Alright, in this example I'm going to show you my exact combo. What I usually do when I try to follow up on people on a, an existing clump. So you're coming out of the respawn. Pop all your consumable, your regen, your gemstone, your cleanse spot momentarily before the clump fight. What I usually do first is that if I see a lot of reds, I would throw a path into the clump and apply exhaust on them. You can see that icon right there. And then I would go into a Miley Cyrus, into a shockwave. And then you would throw a graph, you regrab immediately into one or two light attacks to get your Molo stack up and into a Maelstrom. So we go back a little bit here. Right, you're coming out of respawn by your consumable, by your cleanse pot. Pop all your consumables momentarily before the clump fight. See a lot of red, you pass into that clump, apply exhaust on them. And you would Miley Cyrus onto the clump into a shockwave. Then you regrab immediately into one or two light attacks into a mouse jump. And that is how you properly engage a clump that already been formed following up on people properly. Tip number two, how to get on point safely. In wars or OPRs, capping the point is the winning condition, but you can't just rush into getting on point without considering all the factors, how not to get caught and die immediately in a clone fight outside of point. Cause then you would gain no influence and then you would have to wait until you respawn and then try to get on point again. So you're coming out the gate. There are a bunch of clones already been formed on our road and the point is taking past 60%, 75%. Instead of jumping straight to these clumps that already been formed on our road, resulting in no good outcome at all, what you can do is that you can swing wide to wherever there's no red at all. In this example, I'm swinging to opposite bonfire because there's no red at all on this side. So I can try to get on point safely by swing wide into the point on the left side. So I'm swinging wide, I'm not getting caught or anything. Right here, I'm getting on point and nobody's looking at me, see? The point's ticking but nobody looking at me and they try to get on point right here. So you path on that into a shockwave. I'm living right here without getting caught at all while providing all the utilities I can, popping all my consumables to a graph, to a maelstrom. But that's how you get on point safely. Number three, consumable usage. 
Popping your consumables correctly could keep you alive for as long as possible and allows you to play more aggressively without being punished too hard. No matter how good you are mechanically, without using consumables correctly, you are not going to be able to perform at the highest level. Alright, so you just respawn. Try to get back to the scene by popping a haste spot. Turn on the map, locate your teammates, and locate your healer is the most important thing. So I see him right here, like casting at the gate. So I'm trying to go in, communicate with him. So I come with him and I tell him that I'm about to take a lot of damage. And right then, right momentarily before engaging into this clum fight, I pop a gemstone dust, following up with a regenerating pot. And just right before I engage into this clump fight, right, I pop my cleanse pot. And this allowed me to be immune to any debuffs at all apply on me for a small window. So I'm taking a lot of damage here. These two guys are focusing on me. Not a single cast been put on me yet because he's trying to get his cooldowns back. So I'm still living. Not a single debuffs on me except for the slow because, you know, the cleanse pot just doesn't cleanse that. And I'm still living, I'm still living. And I got a DE on me, cast on me, so I'm living right here. Putting all my utilities on point without getting punished too hard. And I can play as aggressive as I can. 1v2, 1v3 without taking too much incoming damage. Um, by popping my consumable correctly. And that is how you use your consumables correctly into engaging a clone fight. Tip number four, stamina management. One of the biggest skill gaps between good players and bad players is stamina management. Under extreme pressure, how well you manage your stamina would be the deciding factor, keeping you alive for as long as possible in a clone fight. So the key of success here is to learn the rhythm of dodging. You would want to do two to three light attacks, then dodge, then two to three light attacks, then dodge again. Also, Eating up a couple of light attacks would not kill you. Instead, saving your stamina to dodge more deadly abilities like shockwaves, grabs, or maelstroms. That way you could stay alive without stamming out constantly. Okay, so this is what I mean by the rhythm of dodging. Before going into a clone fight, I pop my stone form, which is the ultimate that I chose here in order to allow me to play more aggressively in a clone fight without getting stacker or stun. Though you still need to dodge because you don't want to take any incoming damage. So you do one, two light attack and this guy's just jump up, he's about to shockwave. Then I have the full stamina bar right here so I can dodge it. One, two light attack into a dodge. And that's basically how you do it whenever you try to engage into a clone fight. You need to learn to save your stamina for that and when you're engaging into a clone fight, do not try to flip flop into a clone fight by just dodging constantly and then stamming out yourself. So again, going into a clone fight, pop all your consumables, pop your ultimate if you have it. Do one, two light attack and be aware of your situation right here, have the composure, the vision to make sure you save your stamina bar for that. So this guy's about to shockwave. I dodge. Two, one, two light attack into dodge. Into one, two light attack into dodge. And that's basically how you do it. So I have a really effective way of how to get out a graph without doing the double jump. So look at the example right here. I'm trying to get in going to the left side because I don't want to get caught right there on top of the point. So this guy trying to shockwave me. He jump up. I dodge it and then they doing a bunch of CC try to cut me right here I got rooted I got slowed this guy vines me momentarily right after and then I got vine got rooted right here grab throw on me another grab thrown on me so what you can do is that you would wait probably around half a second to a second depends on how many freedoms you got on your gear and what I do here is that I dodge and I jump and I'm out of the graph. I'm going to go back so you guys can see it. So I'm trying to get out. They're catching me and booting me. Alright, grab thrown on me. So I dodge it. 
once right there, most people will do double jump and try to get out, right? But what you can do is that you dodge once and then you jump. That means the space bar. Just jump out of the graph after you dodge once. And make sure you have to wait probably for around half a second to a second. Give or take depends on how many freedoms you got and you're out of the graph. Tip number five, communication is key. Communicating with your teammates about your locations, your abilities, cooldowns, also calling out your abilities constantly would result in more clump fight wins so they can play off of your info. So if you're not a talkative person, try to get out of that comfort zone and communicate with your teammates more often. Calling out where you place your abilities, your cooldowns, how many seconds until you can engage or follow up again, playing together as a team and follow up on each other. This is so easy to say but so hard to do in a clone fight because you can't see anything. Also, one other thing that you can do as a lead bruiser is asking your healer to hold on to a secret until you engage. That way you can utilize the healing more efficiently. Get breakdown, hot rune choices, gem setup, and mass story trees. So this part is going to be a little bit longer because I'm covering a lot here and this might be controversial for a lot of people in what they might think would be best but this is what I found that been working for me so far. So I would try to go for 5 resilience. I would say that's like the bare minimum right now for bruisers because there are a lot of abilities that increase the crit damage. So 5 resilient or 4 if you don't have the goal for it. And then try to go for 4 shucking for it. And then 3 to 4 freedoms if you have the goal. If not, that's okay. And on the armor, uh, you will should you should try to get Maelstrom and Gravity Well as the two weapon perks on the armors and then Shockwave on your armor. Um, so the perfect setup in my opinion would be 3 to 4 freedoms, 5 resilience, 4 to 5 shirking for it depends on how many freedoms you want, and then Maelstrom, Gravity Well, Shockwave on the hammer. Alright, so on my hat, I'm running Resilient, Shucking Fort, Enfeebling Maelstrom. On my chest, Resilient, Freedom, Shucking Fort. On my gloves, Resilient, Shucking Fort, Freedom. Same goes for the pants, Resilient, Shucking Fort, Freedom. And then Resil, Shucking Fort, Gravity Well for my shoes. Uh, so with this setup right here, I'm running three Freedoms, five Resilient, and five Shucking Fort. Sometimes if I feel like I need another freedom, then I would throw in this headwear right here. Just so I get a little more slippery and they would not be able to catch me as much. But this is probably the best setup right here. I'm going to throw a screenshot of my gear later on. On the jewelry, I'm running slash protection, health, stamina, recovery on the amulet. Leeching, invigorated punishment, slash damage on my ring because I don't feel like you need hardy as a medium bruiser. If you manage your stamina well and you look at all my bots, I don't stand out a whole lot. And then on the ring, you can either go for refreshing toast, regenerating, pur purifying toast. I would say refreshing toast and purifying toast are the two must have perks. And the third perk could be regenerating or refreshing ward or refreshing. So, earring, you can really go crazy with it. So, for a lot of people, they still prefer attunement over chain. But I would say the two must have perks are Throating Strikes and Refreshing Moves. So I would want to have those two perks and then the third perk could be Chain Lining or it could be Attunement. But based on testing, I feel like Chain Lining is going to be charging your ult a lot faster than the Attunement because your ult is getting charged by the instances of the ticks that proc on top of the enemies. So the more ticks you got, the more, the faster it is for you to charge the ultimate. And then on my hammer, I got Throating Strike, Attunement, Shadowing Shockwave. I would say this whole set of mine is pretty bizzed out. Um, and on the Heart Rune, uh, as a point bruiser, I don't like Detonate anymore because since they nerfed it and they buffed the Cunning Heart Rune on Stone Form, I feel like this is the choice right now because the fortifying form is applying separately from the hardened form so you're getting flat out 40% of fortify and you can go over uh, fortify cap try to cancel out all the rents right and then for the gem setup I'm going for four onyxes and four opals 
That way, combining with the slash protection, I'm getting 20% of slash damage for uh, resistance and then 10% of everything else. And I run gemstone whenever I'm um, warring because uh, there are a lot of different types of uh, damage out there that could easily kill you. Like elemental damage with the rune glasses and all that, with the detonate, the ice storm and all that stuff. So running the gemstone dust, I would say is a solid choice. Um, you can also run the brutal hot rune of detonate if you're going for more kills, but trying to su trying to survive is my top priority. I also think that the rune glass on the armor is kind of overrated. Uh, instead, I would rather take 2.5 more resistance on everything else uh, instead of the 5% outgoing damage of the punishing um, rune glass. Because you're already dealing so much outgoing damage already. So go, try to go for the 20 10 ratio. This is like the gold standard right here. And then for the mastery tree, I'm not gonna go into it too deep anymore. So you guys can go ahead and copy my tree if you guys want to copy it. I would say the Great X tree is pretty standard right here. And I don't like whirlwind, so I use the charge instead. And uh, yeah, and then this is my hammer. Okay, that is pretty much it for the videos guys. Uh, if you have any suggestions, put them down in the comments below. And then we can all discuss. And until next time, peace.